So, yep, this is going to be new part of our parabola. So we've talked about the parabola graph, right? We've talked about what a parabola graph looks like. Um, the parabola graph comes from your quadratic. And we can have something that's either going to open down, or we talked about quadratics. That it's possible for them to open upwards, right? And the next important thing is we talked about all quadratics follow a form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So, so far we've talked about something like that. And what we did is we also talked about how to find the axis of symmetry. Um, I'll make the axis of symmetry the y axis there. So we talked about how to find the axis of symmetry. And then we talked about the vertex was the, either the max or the minimum points, right? This is all stuff we talked about. And then we learned algebraically how to find the axis of symmetry in the vertex. So today, what I want to focus in on is finding some certain points. And the certain important points we're going to be looking at is this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point and that point. So the ones that are touching the other side? Yeah. The ones that are touching the x and the y axes. Because if I was going to label this correctly, we know that this is our x axis, and this is our y axis. Over here, x axis, y axis. Okay? <coughs> so let's go and talk a little bit about the blue. And actually, you know what? Yeah, let's go and talk about. Eh, Let's change this up. Let's make it red for the x intercepts. Okay? So when the graph crosses, when the graph crosses the x axis, those are what we call our x intercepts, right? X intercepts, okay? Now, here's one thing I want you guys to understand. The x-intercept, what is the y value, right? You guys know like when we have tick marks, you know you go over 1, you go over 2, you go over 3, you go over 4, right? What, so this point is 4 comma what? What is the y value at that point? 0. So what we can say, what you guys are going to write down, is x-intercept is when y equals 0, OK? Then, let's go and take a look at the blue points. The blue points are where the graph crosses the y-axis. So we could say those, where the blue points, where they cross the y-axis, we call those the y-intercept. And the y-intercept, if you look at this, let's look at this point, which would be at like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this point is at. What is the x value when the y value is at 6? 0. So you could say x equals 0. And let's write in that point for you guys to help you out. OK? Do you guys see that when the graph crosses the x axis, the y value is 0? When the graph crosses the y axis, the x, -ax the x value is 0. Do you guys see that? So it's up. Yeah, it's kind of opposite. So let's go and look at these two points. So this one would be 0, comma 4, negative 4. And this one is 3, comma 0, and negative 3, comma 0. OK, so you guys can see how these points work, right? So how do I find, if I give you an equation, how are you going to determine then what the x and y intercepts are? Okay, So let's go and take a look at a problem. Um, I'll just give you a fairly basic problem, and we'll just work from it from there. So this new equation is not going to have any resemblance to these two. So let's say I say y equals um, x squared plus 5x plus 4. And I say, tell me, what are the x and the y intercepts? So to find the x-intercept, that means y equals 0. So you're going to put a 0 in for y. 0 equals x squared plus 5x plus 4. 
to find the y-intercept, you're going to put a 0 in for x. So you do y equals 0 squared plus 5 times 0 plus 4. Does everybody kind of see the difference? The x-intercepts are when y values equal 0. So you put a 0 in for the y. The y-intercepts are when the y-intercept is when x equals 0. So you put a 0 in for x in the equation. Kind of make a little sense? Yep. How it follows? It really does. Okay. So now we just need to solve for the other variable. I like doing the y-intercept because this is pretty easy. 0 squared is 0, plus 5 times 0 is 0, plus 4. Therefore, the y-intercept for this problem is y equals 4. Yes? Here? No, I, I marked it out as 1, 2, 3, 4. It's not very scale-ish, but yeah, I put four tick marks. 1, 2, 3, 4. I, it's not supposed to be. It's just supposed to be a reference. It's not supposed to be exact. Okay? So y equals 4. That one's pretty basic, right? Now, you guys remember why we spent like three weeks factoring? Okay? Guess what? Here's where the factoring part comes in. How do you solve for x when you have two of them? Here was pretty easy. You just simplified. But now, guess what you have to do? Factor. You have to do what? Factor. So 0 equals x plus 4 times x plus 1. Now remember, why did we solve by factoring? Because we need to find the value of x. So therefore, x plus 4 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, x equals negative 4, x equals negative 1. So now I've found out both of my x-intercepts and my y-intercept. Anybody have any questions on that? Sure. Please do.